Okay, I'm not quite ready to begin my intermediate tutorials yet, but this is kind of a transitional tutorial between the intermediate and beginning tutorials, all right? And there's something important about this. We're going to deal with particle systems and texture maps and how they're tied together. And so this is just a regular plane, and I marked the seams and unwrapped it, and I've mapped this image on here. So here's the main texture, and then I had to go over here into the texture button and grab a map. But before I did that, the way I really did it was I went into the particle system first and added a particle. And I'm going to show you one little thing that's important about this is that when I go from the particle system to the texture setting, up here this blue button is highlighted for texture particles. If I'm in the material tab and I go to the texture setting, this button is highlighted. All right. So I want to make sure that when I do this approach, I start from the particles and I go to the textures like this. And then I selected image or movie instead of the default clouds or blends or whatever, whatever it was. So I have image or movie set and I went here and grabbed this particular image right here. Here's my UV image editor. And so this is the image that I mapped on. Now I generated this within my texture design program so I could get this gradient around like this going from black to, it wasn't quite all the way white, it's maybe about, well, or maybe it was, it was close. But anyway, so I'm, I generated this gradient, and the reason being is that I'm going to use this gradient as the means of controlling how the particles are emitted from the surface of the plane. Whereas normally if I wanted to control them, what I've done in the past, I've used a vertex group. Well, notice in the particle tab, I go down here, if I go down to the vertex groups, I have no vertex group selected. Whereas in a vertex group, you would set your values 1, maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and then based on those weights, your particles would emit differently. In this mode, what we're doing, we're using the gradient of the image to control how the particles emit from the face of here. And even though this isn't a perfect gradient, you'll get an idea when I run it from here, you can see the particles run around here based on going from the darker colors to the lighter colors like this. All right, so that's the way I'm controlling it, and I can control that down here through this density button and this time button. By default, the density is off, and I'll turn that off, and then you'll see it goes, it starts at where it's completely black, then follows it around till it reaches the whiter values here over time. And the density affects it based on there's less, fewer particles emitted from the darker area and more particles emitted when it gets up to here. So you can use any kind of texture map you want to do the effect. So then maybe with them what you do is I can create all kinds of gradients, you know, to maybe a squiggly gradient or and maybe it's a checkerboard where there's a dark spot and a white spot over here and a brighter spot here so they'll jump to different locations. Because even this kind of gradient would be difficult to generate using a vertex group. I mean, can you imagine trying to select one little region, setting a value, another region setting a value? So you use a texture map instead. All right, and so then maybe you have this set. Then what you can do is you can go grab another object, which I have over here in this layer right here. So I'll just activate it. So there's no collision in this object. So maybe you're zoomed in, and now you just see, you don't see your texture map underneath it. And the particles are just coming through that layer like that. So it allows, it allows you to control how your particles are emitting, where they're emitting from. Just It's an alternative way and it's a really powerful way as well. All right, well, I hope that gives you some insight, but the point is going from here to here, making sure that that button is active, your, your particle textures. And you could add another texture even. You could add multiple textures to this as well. All right, well, maybe that gives you some insight for your work. And that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.